Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Beyond Healthcare System Towards an Health Tech Ecosystem. This is a European stakeholder event, which we organize as Junior Achievement in a virtual format due to the COVID-19 pandemic. A health crisis which has made it even more urgent to reimagine healthcare and bring more innovation and entrepreneurial thinking into this sector. So Junior Achievement in Europe and many of the JA national organization are proud partners with uh, our co-organizer of the event, which is Novartis. It's a revolutionary project. It is time for a European virtual pre-accelerator that combines the skills and idea of young people from businesses, IT, and the health sector. And by putting together the skills of this new generation from different countries, we are able to respond to global challenges with a coordinated and innovative joint solution. So please join me in welcoming our great speaker from JA, from Novartis, and from the Novartis Foundation. We are very honored also to have with us today Maria Gabriel as keynote speaker, the EU Commissioner for innovation, research, culture, education, and youth. But before hearing from Commissioner Gabriel, I would like to give the floor to the person who is behind, behind. So the person who is the energy and the power of JA Bulgaria, our CEO, Milena Stoicheva, who has been pioneering this work with Novartis. Milena, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sal. Um, thank you uh, to our partners at Novartis. And I'm really excited. Uh, I think you can even tell it's a moment uh, which we've been dreaming of. And uh, it's a moment to, in fact, share our um, enthusiasm and uh, also belief in what we have started. The pre-accelerator is a vision that we had about uh, three years ago, which we launched together uh, with our alums, uh, uh, junior achievement entrepreneurs, and with our partners from the uh, startup ecosystem in Bulgaria, as well as members of the academic uh, uh, institutions and community in the healthcare sector. And last but not least, uh, Novartis and the established uh, uh, digital health and innovation cluster in Bulgaria, which we jointly uh, collaborate with in promoting the pre-accelerator. So um, I think through this uh, project and um, a new program, we're looking to really find the space and the opportunity uh, to create this territory where um, investors, startups, um, people with ideas, um, other stakeholders of the ecosystem find a way to collaborate and to come up with the latest um, uh, solutions to the challenges, especially now that um, the pandemic has created even more of them. So looking forward to share this experience with you and be on this journey um, is really an exciting time despite of the pandemic. So as I said, we are joined today by great speakers and let me introduce you. Um, Han Hertz. Han is the head of the Novartis uh, Foundation. Han, welcome. Good morning. Where are you connecting from? Just remind all of us. Good morning, Salvatore. I am uh, connecting from Basel in Switzerland. Great. So the virtual floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you so much. And it's really a pleasure to be part of this discussion today. As um, you started by introducing how the challenges we face in the world are really unprecedented, as Salvatore. And I think COVID is really a wake-up call that our health systems are really suffering to address all or not even coping to address all the different challenges we have, be it um, the chronic diseases that are on the rise, the aging population, but also the rapid urbanization across the world. That's also a very big factor 
for health systems to be uh, overwhelmed. And COVID, there the, the constant threat of new diseases such as COVID shows us only how important it is that we really rethink, reimagine the way we can deliver health and care around the world. This has become truly urgent. And that is um, really what we have set out to do at the Novartis Foundation. Our goal is to um, to advance data, digital, and AI-driven solutions to improve population health. So the health of a population at large, I mean with that. And we focus currently specifically on cardiovascular health because cardiovascular disease, unfortunately, is still the number one um, uh, cause of death in the world, even though there's been massive advances in handling cardiovascular disease the health systems are not doing a good job in lowering overall cardiovascular risk and improving that health. So how we do that is by partnering with governments around the world and partners, local partners, local innovators, uh, local out-of-the-box thinkers to redesign um, their health system and also identify potential solutions that can address the gaps that they face and then we build together with the government, as we feel in most countries, it's very important to have the government in the driver's seat of, of such public-private partnerships. That and then we build a roadmap towards improving cardiovascular population health. And we do that on the one hand, as I mentioned, by identifying those digital and AI-driven uh, innovations that can help to address the challenges, but also by working at the policy level um, and specifically there through our work with the Broadband Commission for Sustainable Development. That is an organization in the UN that really wants to get uh, broadband available across the world for all people. And we lead the working group on health there. And with that, our last report really focused on how AI is our artificial intelligence is already having an enormous impact on health across the world but it needs governments to realize they have to build an enabling ecosystem for such um, the deployment of such innovations. And if they miss some of the pillars in such an ecosystem, they, they will lag behind and miss the opportunity to, uh, to advance their health systems with the use of AI. And the main or the first uh, part of such an ecosystem is the people. So it's really important to upskill the capabilities in data science, in artificial intelligence, but also in uh, digital technology for the health workforce, the tech workforce, but also the population at large, because being digitally savvy is really important in the world of today. So that being said, one of these six pillars is the people itself. The others are public-private partnerships that are key to driving it and many other uh, aspects which I'm not going to expand on. But we realize that if you want to create those ecosystems locally, it's really crucial to do what you are doing now uh, with our colleagues of Novartis, nurturing the local innovations and these local inno innovation um, ecosystems. And so the Novartis Foundation does that too on, in different uh, countries around the world where we have a dialogue hub and we are currently launching it with an, an expanded version in a new way, the Health Tech Innovation Dialogue Hub, where we convene local innovators, um, local governments, local policymakers or other decision makers with um, researchers, with funders, with big companies, so that in those convenings, there may exist, may originate new public-private partnerships, or there may originate mentorships between um, experts in certain fields that can help these innovators to grow. So it's comparable to your pre-accelerator initiative. And we do that um, in the form of convenings and then nurture the partnerships that start in these, um, in these hubs, if you may. So that is um, what I wanted to, to tell you about our work at the Novartis Foundation, which goes through all continents in the world and currently um, focusing mainly on, the, on Latin America, Asia, Africa and uh, Central and Eastern Europe. Thank you so much, Han. You touched a very important point, digital innovation, AI. 
but also access, so important, broadband access, because we tend to believe we are all in this virtual world, but there is large segment of the population of countries that the gap is becoming even bigger, wider, and we cannot really make it happen. Yes, and that's really important. And the, the digital divide has become the new phase of inequity nowadays during the COVID pandemic. So we really have to advance and call upon governments to make sure their whole populations get connected uh, to the, the internet and broadband. Because currently, a, a little less than half of the world's population is still unconnected. We'll get back to some of your points during the discussions. But uh, it's another time to, uh, for our keynote speaker. Maria Gabriel, the EU Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education and Youth. She is a great supporter of bringing entrepreneurial mindset into the educational system. And we count on her support also to bring our message to health sector policymakers now because we really need to enhance multi-stakeholder collaboration and coordination between different sectors of policymaking. Uh, so we aim to create strong links to the European Commission flagship initiatives this year, the, digi the Digital Education Action Plan and the European Education Area 2025, as well as the EU Research and Innovation Agenda. So let's hear from our keynote speaker, which is Commissioner Gabriel. Ladies and gentlemen, let me start by thanking you for the invitation to be part of this Junior Achievement event. Today, I would like to talk about our efforts to boost entrepreneurship and innovation. We strive to create a stronger, integrated innovation ecosystem in Europe. This ecosystem should rely on a solid network of universities and research centers capable of translating complex knowledge into concrete action. The integrated ecosystem should also ensure access to capital and support services, encourage multi-stakeholder involvement and promote partnerships in innovation communities. First, I will mention higher education. We need higher education to be better integrated into the innovation ecosystem and better connected with the private sector. The higher education sector is an important element of our knowledge strategy, which I presented in September. It brings together the European education area and the European research area. This strategy will drive the transformation of higher education around Europe, supported by both the Erasmus Plus and Horizon Europe programs. Much of this transformation will come through the European Universities Initiative, which already brought together 41 university alliances. They form multidisciplinary and cross-sectoral teams of students and academics, along with public and private sector actors. The participation of local industry and SMEs in these teams will bring students and academics closer to the practical reality of the innovation process, linking theory and practice, science and the end product. Moving on to my second point, I would like to emphasize that our innovation ecosystem cannot afford silos. It needs support, access to funding and the link from education to the market. The European Institute of Innovation and Technology plays an important role here. The EIT, brings together higher education institutions, entrepreneurs, companies, and researchers in the so-called knowledge and innovation communities. In 2019 alone, the EIT supported the creation and provided services to over 1,100 startups, many of them in the health sector, which have overall attracted over 1.8 billion euros in investments. Yet, all this support requires targeted access to funding. This is where the European Innovation Council comes in. Often referred to as the unicorn factory, the European Innovation Council is a pilot that combines an advanced science and tech research program for early stages of innovation and an accelerator program 
for startups and SMEs. I'm glad to say that the EIT and the EIC are deeply intertwined. So far, over 200 startups have benefited from combined support from the EIT and the EIC. And perhaps the best example of this complementarity can be found precisely in health, in our response to the COVID-19 crisis. Moving on to my third and final point, we need to make sure that this ecosystem can be of benefit to everyone. This means that if we invest in digital health technologies, we must also invest in digital skills, both basic and advanced. Advanced skills are needed to create technology and products and the basic skills to use them. The new Digital Education Action Plan is skills and competencies, both basic and advanced, including learning. In addition to developing digital skills, we need to make sure that the innovation ecosystem is fair and equitable. That is why I'm glad that the new project we are launching with Novartis is focusing on Central and Eastern Europe. We need to use all the tools at our disposal to stimulate brain circulation and create the conditions for innovation throughout Europe. Let me share with you that I have proposed the creation of a European innovation area. I want this to happen in close cooperation with organizations such as junior achievement, the business sector, educational institutions, and young entrepreneurial talents. Another key initiative with great potential, also in the field of innovation, is the joint action plan of the European Commission and the Committee of the Regions. It was signed in November on my initiative with the aim to provide regions and cities with the latest data and knowledge and to help them tackle innovation divide and brain drain. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations on your initiative. We need startups thinking and your pre-accelerators will contribute decisively to Europe's innovation landscape. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. When we planned these um, uh, stakeholder events, we could not imagine that it happened the day after a long night of ne negotiations to unlock the recovery fund for Europe coming out of the COVID-19. I promise we didn't know. We might have brought luck to that. Thank you so much to Commissioner Gabriel. Uh, quite frankly, we will be honored to be part of this European innovation area uh, as junior achievement. And we have every year 4 million young people who will, with their creativities and their innovation, we, bring, we can bring to that space, we can bring them to that area. So we also hope, obviously, to uh, see a closer collaboration between the Innovation and Research Commissioner, uh, Gabriel, and the EU Health Commissioner, Kiriakides, in the future, uh, with uh, the initiatives that Junior Achievement and eventually Novartis is, uh, is launching. We are there to support that process. And from the perspective of the Novartis Foundation, how could we speed up the adoption of this new mindset? Because the, the Commissioner was also talking about digital skills, was talking about creativity, was talking about entrepreneurship and linking it up with, with health. So it's a cross-sector collaboration that is needed. No more silos. I love the message of the Commissioner. Thank you, Salvatore. It is so true. If we don't work together, we will not get there. And um, innovators, I know from uh, working with them on the ground, they are really hungry to work together with these different sectors and get uh, more knowledge from the researchers get access to the data, get access to funding, combine the partners all together in, uh, I think it is really essential. And I also really appreciate the commissioner's first point on the skills of the people is really the most important one. It's the same the same um, insight. We, we managed to get out of a landscape analysis of 300 hugely impactful AI in health use cases where we distilled all the learnings from for this roadmap towards 
maturity in AI and health that countries can now use to advance their readiness to deploy artificial intelligence in the health system. And the first uh, part, as I already said, is the people and how we can increase their digital skills. The second part is obviously the infrastructure and the access to data. So that is definitely going to be facilitated with this AI in uh, EU innovation area, which I think is absolutely the way to go. It is the same that we aspire with our dialogue hub that the European Union is now bringing together under one umbrella. It is really impressive. And um, I think COVID really has shown us we have no time to lose. So the commissioner is absolutely right to push this through now and bring these different expert centers, educational centers and innovators under the same roof. It is a wonderful message, in fact, for Europe. It is, and it is. And uh, yeah, when this pandemic will be over, because we'll be over, are we going back to normal? I don't think so. We are going back to better. Yes, and we are thinking to go actually beyond. So we mentioned at the beginning what we have as a pan-European initiative. The commissioner had told, uh, has told about the support to this pan-European initiative that built on a great success story uh, developed in Bulgaria, hmm? the Beyond Pre-Accelerator. And I would like now to ask Roland Krasig. Roland is Novartis Oncology General Manager for Central Europe and Novartis Hungary to present this initiative in more detail. But first, Roland, what is Novartis' vision for the engagement in the field of innovation and health tech ecosystem creation? Yeah, thanks so much, Salvatore. As Novartis, as you know, our mission is to reimagine medicine and to tackle the most difficult healthcare challenges throughout, through digital and data. And to do so, we aim at being the preferred partner of the health tech ecosystem. Our Beyond initiative, I will going to talk about a little bit later, is one of those initiatives. But we also have created a network of innovation hubs, and they are called Biome. And what Biome wants to empower and engender health tech companies and people passionate about disrupting healthcare through the use of digital and data technologies. It's also a commitment to foster open innovation, collaboration, and external partnerships in the healthcare arena. To quote our CEO, Vas Narashimhan, he says, passionate startups and entrepreneurs are the vanguard of health tech. We, as Novartis, want to work together to translate that innovation into real solutions for patients. And this is, sounds very exciting. Thank you so much for the insight. But can you tell us a little bit more about the collaboration between Junior Achievement and the Novartis in Europe? Uh, this joint project will eventually scale uh, the Bulgarian pre-accelerator to the rest of Europe. And I want to thank all the CEOs of the different countries of JA, as well as the staff and the people, the executives and the staff of Novartis that are collaborating across different European countries. Yes, yeah, so first of all, it's great to hear that Commissioner Gabriel's support for Beyond. Uh, our approach has been to start in the first phase in a number of Central European and Baltic countries. Uh, later on, uh, once we have the initial and hopefully encouraging results, our Beyond Pre-Accelerator may even be an interesting project for other European countries to implement. The focus is on mapping and strengthening the entrepreneurial health ecosystems in the participating countries and to start a process of collaboration between them. To do this, we will leverage both the junior achievement and the Novartis networks in these countries. And this has created a really strong combination of education and startup ecosystem players on the one hand and the medical and healthcare stakeholders on the other. So we are basically aiming to create true entrepreneurial hubs in the medical sector. The objective is to increase collaboration and sharing of experiences between all stakeholders in order to strengthen the health tech entrepreneurial ecosystem at the local level, and also to build pan-European networks through collaboration between the countries. So in summary, Beyond supports the grassroots creation and growth of innovation hubs and health tech ecosystems. So we are actually going beyond the typical thinking, the education, the entrepreneurs, the health, but bringing in mixing. And then we are going beyond national countries by also creating virtual pre-accelerator where we mix 
we shake skills, creativity, innovation of the young people with the knowledge, the experience and the innovation of a great a company like Novartis. So thank you so much for being a, a great partner in, uh, in this adventure. And we will definitely achieve very, very high heights. So um, I like now to move into the second part of uh, this uh, webinar. And I hand over to my fellow colleagues, Milena Stoicheva, the CEO of JE Bulgaria. Milena, what thoughts has the discussion sparked so far to you? Are we in the right direction? Thank you, Sal. Um, actually, from the words also of Commissioner Gabriel, if I may again bring her message forward, it sounds that we are not only on the right track, but maybe we are in the focus, in the center of it. And I will, uh, I will say why I, I think so. And I would like to bring actually uh, here uh, to the screen and to the monitor and to our virtual stage um, uh, members of our discussion panel uh, from a number of countries that were part of the, the process of mapping and uh, needs and gap analysis that we have been conducting in Europe um, in the CE region. Um, so uh, our, our approach in this case would be uh, we would like to look at how we can create a living ecosystem of entrepreneurs and innovators who are working together, who are working uh, in a sustainable and effective way. And I think already uh, Roland also mentioned that our approach has been to apply through this pre-accelerator model, the open innovation opportunities that is uh, being created nowadays and that are coming forward to the scene and provide a way that we can channel all of this energy of the young people, of the experts, the domain experts in the healthcare system and also of the digital uh, technologies uh, achievements at the moment so that together we really put at the center of attention the citizens and the patients in the uh, in our societies uh, through the, and through some of these solutions. Uh, so uh, let me ask first. I would like to turn to Dr. Stefan Budkik, uh, who is uh, who comes from Digital Health Malta. Um, yes. Thank you, th thank you for joining us today. I know you, are, you have a very vibrant ecosystem in Malta, working in the space of digital innovation in healthcare. And I know that you have been particularly uh, active, especially now in the time of the COVID pandemic. Uh, how can we leverage this competence uh, that digital um, health Malta has to excite more young people to enter the space? How can we collaborate better? Commissioner Gabriel said also something that we need to find this common space, this common uh, territory where our entrepreneurs and startup can find a way to promote further their uh, own companies and solutions uh, for Europe and to create a competitive space for Europe. So what is your point of view? So uh, thank you everyone Thanks for the invitation. So let me just kick off by starting off with the vision of Digital Health Malta. And we really and truly want to help with the transformation of the Maltese healthcare sector through Digital Health. And we think about doing this by informing the general public because we believe that uh, by informing them, we are helping with innovation and we're facilitating this transition because this transition is actually taking place right now. And uh, by focusing on those uh, things, we will not only help the Maltese economy because the economy still plays an important part in all of this, but will actually help the Maltese population to live healthier and happier lives. So that's one of our main aims. But reaching out to the to the to our young audience here is that you can be the change you can kick off the change and starting off something as simple as a 
fall into your organization or non-governmental organization as Digital Head Malta is, you can kick off a lot of useful discussions. Even say organizing one event where there is someone from the government, where there's someone from a non-governmental organization, such as a patient organization. Let's not forget patients. We need to focus on including our patients in our all the equations. Getting a private industry partner and also getting academia and research, getting them all together on one table in one location, even in an informal setting, helps to uh, kick off these conversations and even as Anne mentioned earlier on, to start kicking off maybe new partnerships, new ideas. This is critical. And just by creating a simple event or creating research or reaching out to the right people, even getting them engaged and getting them to say, oh, wow, digital health, what is this topic about? So just getting them involved and getting them engaged and showing passion about the topic will help us reach new heights. Well, thank you, uh, Stefan. Uh, is there excitement about uh, such a, such work in uh, your ecosystem? And how do you think we can, in fact, collaborate with the JLAMs or the universities that are there? Are they open to something like this? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the response that we've started getting, especially in this year, where we even came, we developed a chatbot, for example, we launched a telemedicine platform as Digital Health Malta. So all of these simple initiatives, they really started getting a lot of interest. And even, for example, our engagement on our social media has exponentially increased in the past year. So yes, there is interest, but now it's not just about this ex ex um, exponential curve, but it's maintaining that curve and maintaining that interest and making sure that people and engaging them. So now that is the next big challenge ahead of us, like how to maintain this engagement at a very high level. And as you can see now, even with the developments in new um, areas, even with the new environment, there are even new buildings now which are going to be um, built up pretty close to the hospital, which are also going to be focused more on life sciences and uh, digital health. So there, there's a lot of potential there. And uh, I, I see, the, like at this point, I can see only um, a positive future. But now the trick is, to, how shall we maintain the high level of engagement across all our stakeholders? I like to hear an optimistic view from a doctor, uh, but I, I know part of it is because you have been part of the Digital Health Initiative in Malta, and I think we really look forward to creating a stronger link with you um, in, in building an opportunity for also the younger specialists to get into the scene. Um, so, thank you. Now I would like to turn uh, to uh, Neboša Djurjevic, who is from Digital Serbia. Um, so, Neboša, thank you for joining us and for uh, representing uh, the voice of the, uh, some of the stakeholders and partners in Serbia in this uh, joint initiative that we have been uh, working on. Um, you have quite uh, done quite of an extensive job in mapping and um, uh, developing uh, uh, what are the necessary skills, what are the necessary competences, but also uh, factors to to grow the digital um, and empower the digital innovations in Serbia. How do you see this uh, spilling over to? the healthcare and uh, where do you see the opportunity for us to collaborate and to make this uh, in favor of the citizens of your country? I think you need to unmute the microphone. Yes, thank you, Milena, and thank you uh, for having me. Uh, yes, Digital Serbia Initiative is a private not-for-profit uh, organization that has over 30 members who are basically uh, digital leaders in their fields. When we talk about the health tech, uh, actually our members are Novartis, Roche, Seven Bridges, Genomics, Visaris. So we have a pretty deep field of uh, digital leaders in that segment too. Uh, our objective is to develop strong digital economy with high value added based on innovation. And that's across all sectors. When it comes to uh, digital health, 
uh, one of the key enablers of this is that our government, on their priority for the next period, basically uh, put uh, on the top place digital transformation of the healthcare system. And that's being planned in a very systematic way. Uh, they are already collecting a lot of data from all three levels, primary, secondary, and tertiary level of uh, healthcare. And also they are planning uh, in the state, which is the main healthcare system, to uh, implement digital technologies and innovative solutions to improve the effectiveness, um, uh, efficiency of the, of the healthcare system, etc. But one of the elements that's basically the, the joint um, uh, interest, per se, with the private sector is to provide opportunities for research and development and innovative solutions to be developed in private sector and then be applied and used uh, in the healthcare system. And what we basically have here are three categories of actors. So one are healthcare systems. The main one is the, the public one, the state one, but we also have a few private uh, healthcare systems that are quite developed and strong. Then we have traditional players who are domain experts who have been providing solutions uh, like uh, pharma companies, uh, biotech companies, and also the equipment uh, uh, manufacturers and providers uh, of medical devices. Uh, but uh, so, and then the third player now coming into the play are the digital players because we have. Uh, digital deep tech sectors who are horizontal, like artificial intelligence, uh, data science, etc., that uh, can be applied across the board in different sectors. And in healthcare, they definitely also play the key role. So one of the companies, which is really a successful startup in, from Serbia, is Seven Bridges Genomics, that does uh, sequencing of genomes. And they have one of the leading platforms in the world. So what we are basically doing here is creating this healthcare ecosystem where we will have the collaboration of all three, the uh, healthcare systems who have domain experts from somebody providing actually services to the patients and, and, and population. We have traditional players with deep domain expertise and understanding of the pain points and the areas where there is opportunity for improvement. And then we have startups who are not uh, burdened with too much knowledge, with big customer base, etc., who can really be freewheeling with propeller hats and uh, work with those domain experts and service providers to, uh, you know, break the mold and come up with some innovative solutions. So practically, the way we are doing this, basically, within our um, uh, within our organization, we are coming up with uh, four or five use cases where digital technologies could provide some uh, major impact uh, in the area of health tech. We are going to, and that's basically together, startups and traditional players who are providing solutions for healthcare. We are going to um, discuss those use cases with the government agency that's responsible for digital transformation of the healthcare system. And then start small, start with those four or five use cases as a beta to try to see how we can work together. How can that big data set be anonymized and uh, access to structured data be provided to the companies who want to do research and development and innovate. And then from there, in cooperation with you, look at the way how we can actually spin off or create the the hub focusing of healthcare. And in addition to that, just to say, we are also working on the funding mechanism that also combines public and private financing, basically the co-funding scheme, and there will be a focus on health tech there too. So that's basically what's in front of us. Thank you, Nebosha. Actually, it sounds like you have already a plan um, uh, and happy to be joining forces with you. I think one point I will uh, wanted to emphasize here that you also brought up, and it is related to the fact that healthcare is a complex system, and we need to bring really all of the different stakeholders in one place where they can uh, work together. 
And it's extremely important to channel the technologies and the latest development um, in favor and work with uh, the domain experts uh, who know where the uh, most critical pains are and points that can later on uh, you know, support the whole uh, ecosystem and uh, solutions in there. Um, so thank you for that um, uh, insight and uh, uh, practice, the best practice that you're bringing. Let me ask now, Andra Bagdunaite, I hope I pronounced uh, properly your name, Andra, um, from Startup Wise Guys in Lithuania. Um, the Baltics are very well known for their um, innovative uh, spirit and also for being able to quickly uh, put in practice and put on the market uh, digital solutions uh, in favor of the development of our society. So can you share with us your experience and uh, how you believe uh, this joint effort can fit in your ecosystem? Where did you start? Whom have you supported? And uh, where are the opportunities to work together in developing the pre-accelerator hub? Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you, Milena, for, for, for the warm introduction. So uh, we at Startup Wise, guys, we are an early stage accelerator and investor. So basically, we are working with startups uh, by supporting their growth with funding and also with the expertise of our vast uh, mentor network. So with the goal basically to take them, you know, from, from an MVP stage to already bringing the product to the market and getting the first customers. So um, uh, we in particular, of course, we are looking for those talents, you know, we are looking for those startups out there who are solving uh, problems that are important for the society. And right now we have launched our first sustainability program, actually, where we have several, several startups who are working in the field of healthcare. Uh, but I must stress, you know, that for startups, still the majority of them are thinking about software solutions. So they're thinking about some sort of applications or maybe software for businesses. And not so many are brave enough to really start companies in the field of healthcare. There's a lot of hardware over there, you know, it's much, much more challenging to bring the products to the market. The life cycles are longer. So I think it's very important for the whole ecosystem and for all the um, stakeholders to encourage um, the, the, the birth of these type of startups. Uh, from what I see, at least in the Baltics, the majority of startups uh, that are working in healthcare are coming from universities, are coming from a lot of research that is happening in the lab. And although we do have some organizations who are helping startups to make this leap from laboratory, from R&D to the market, probably there still isn't enough. So um, uh, a lot of support is needed at the early stage. And uh, by having a pre-accelerator, like pre-acceleration programs, mentorship programs, we can really support those young talents who want to take their in you know their their creations from the laboratory to the market so i think that this is like this is the space where a lot of the support is needed because many many of the startups they do not jump through the so-called valley of death you know when you when you seem to be ha having something but it's just not quite there yet it cannot be commercialized just yet so um the more we can support the startups at the early stage, I think the better the results will be. Uh, and so we really encourage these type of initiatives. We do a pre-acceleration program ourselves. Uh, we are involved in a lot of hackathons also to help with ideation and, and, and to foster kind of the, the growth of new companies. Thank you, Andra. I think you actually pointed uh, one very important factor uh, that needs to be taken into consideration in the current environment. And it is that there are maybe a lot of ideas, but there aren't enough places and, and uh, maybe hubs or, or processes in place that can channel that effort and also bring together uh, 
younger students or a younger professional in one space to create solutions together as a team. And I think this is really the space uh, which we want to uh, establish and or to capture where there are uh, maybe solutions uh, that have been come up or maybe the work on their dissertations, on a PhD uh, work or research can be um, brought in the business context and developed as a, an innovation to reach closer, uh, quicker the market. Um, so, I, I last, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Pavlos Kosteas, who is the Executive Director at the uh, Karais Kakion Foundation. Karais Kakion Foundation. Did I say it properly? <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, from Cyprus. And uh, Cyprus is another member of our um, uh, first uh, region that we are exploring the opportunities for establishing the digital hubs in uh, uh, healthcare. Um, Dr. Kusteas, what uh, uh, can you uh, offer as an insight from your ecosystem and where do you see an opportunity to collaborate? Right. Um... First of all, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to participate in executive. Um, I believe that in the era of this COVID epidemic, um, it's, it's, we should see it not only as a cultural, economic, and social disaster, but also as an opportunity. Because this epidemic brought to the surface the huge gap between the digital evolution, uh, great advances in, in biomedicine, biomedical sciences, and also the big gap from the advances in technology and the healthcare and the patients themselves. So this opportunity to collaborate, to bring together uh, new solutions to the patients is, is a great opportunity. I believe that our investment and our focus should be in the young scientists, uh, help them bring new ideas into the uh, into uh, healthcare systems, into the uh, resolving new uh, uh, current problems with new ideas, uh, bringing together the brilliant young scientists from different countries uh, will give us the opportunity to support them, uh, bring the stakeholders together, the social, the administrative, the educational and the industry and allow them to, to grow into a new generation of digital health entrepreneurs. Uh, in Cyprus, we're still very young in this network. Uh, we are in the process of identifying the stakeholders uh, in close collaboration with the Junior Achievement Cyprus and the industry. And I think um, we uh, should be able to contribute in a very uh, fruitful and close collaboration. We're really excited uh, to be able to participate in this network. There's a great interest uh, from academics, uh, from uh, the industry and uh, the other social partners to contribute to this initiative. And I think it's going to lead to a great, um, uh, fruitful collaboration. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Costez. And I, I would uh, maybe conclude here with um, 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 an insight for me that um, healthcare has been probably one of the last uh, to be experiencing and seeing um, uh, opportunities in, in, in innovation in the last years. But somehow this COVID accelerated uh, its importance and uh, uh, created a fast path to moving in that direction. And we really see a much more open-minded uh, approach, um, uh, very much in the spirit of open innovation of uh, communities to work together, but also uh, people from the medical field, uh, the specialists there, as well as others uh, to join efforts in create joint solutions for society. So um, I think we can move maybe to uh, if there are any questions to address or comments uh, from the other participants, this is uh, concluding our discussion in the panel. Sure, thank you so much, Milena. Thank you so much to our speakers uh, today. A, a different perspective, all complementary uh, on one objective, um, but also 
uh, one clear need. We need to accelerate. We do need to accelerate, and this is the right occasion. This is the right moment to accelerate and creating these ecosystems between the different players. And the event of today is bringing together policymakers, private sectors, civil societies, foundation, practitioners, academias, health experts together to start building this um, joint European ecosystem, this joint European pre-accelerator for uh, health tech, for the health tech industry. So um, I think, yes, we have a few minutes out there. Can you see if we have Beck and, and Roland, they're still with us? Yes, we are. <laughs> You are. Uh, quick feedback on the discussion so far. I thought it was really relevant and, and uh, very insightful of how the different countries are already approaching this acceleration phase. I cannot agree more that it's we really have no time to lose. We have to do it now. And coming to um, the name beyond to build back better isn't that a fantastic opportunity we have thanks to the beautiful technology era we live in? So I loved uh, the discussion just now. Roland. Yeah, I agree. I think there is a tremendous momentum right now. I think there are, there's this saying that there are decades when nothing happens and there's, there are weeks when, when decades happen. And I think that's exactly where we are right now. And it's exciting to see whether we very much aligned uh, across Junior Achievement, Novartis Foundation, Novartis on the business side, uh, the commissioner as well, and all, you know, the people working innovation theme really that health, it's now the time for healthcare. It's a time for a golden age of healthcare for disrupting this healthcare to create a better world uh, for patients and all stakeholders in the healthcare system. So I'm very, very excited to be part of this journey and looking forward to our collaboration. We cannot miss that opportunities. It's a unique opportunities. And for many, this young generation is the COVID generation, the lost generation, the unemployed generations. For us, really, those are tomorrow's heroes. And we need to continue inspiring the new generations because they are definitely the solutions. So without further ado, I would like to, we talked about ecosystems of institution of organizations um, that needs to come together. But in these institutions, in these organizations, there are people. There are people who are working very hard to put things together to work as a team. And I'd really like to thank a fantastic teams that so far has been working together in this project. Uh, obviously you already met Milena and Roland and all the people who were in the webinars, but there is a person, Ivo Petrov, who has been with Milena, the real engine, Ivo Petrov from, the, uh, from Novartis that I'd like to thank for all his commitment and passion that is putting into this project, as well as from uh, the from the edge, we have Jovan uh, Dragiev from JA Bulgaria. We have uh, Malvina Ilieva, and from the JA uh, Europe team, we have Mina Mendlery, we have Nicolas Greva, uh, Gokht Bashar, uh, Davide Copaloni, Cesar Kimeno, and uh, Diana uh, Philip. Um, without forgetting from Novartis Rosen Dimitrov and Lucy Setien from the Novartis Foundation. I hope I didn't miss anyone, otherwise just blame it on me. Uh, but uh, uh, this really gives the sense on how many people from how many different organizations and institutions are putting their brain, their skills, their effort together to create a new ecosystems. Uh, I think that we are done for today, but this is just the first step. And from now on, we're going to accelerate and we are going definitely beyond. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. It's been great to be here. Thank you, Milena. Thank you, sir. Have a beautiful sunny day. <laughs> <laughs>